queued up. Tell me it's time to go. All right, ready to go. All right, hey, welcome to Expedition Church of the Triad. We're glad to have you with us tonight as we continue. And I'm back on a Wednesday night. Hallelujah. Um, so praise the Lord. We are continuing to teach along the lines of reclaiming the blessing through words. Now, if you remember last time, we were talking about being the seed of Abraham and heirs according to the promise. And we spent that that Sunday night service on the 12th of July, Wednesday night service, 12th of July is when that service was. I was gone the following week. That, that following Wednesday was our 42nd anniversary. The, the next Wednesday was a the real va only vacation vacation we were taking other than running up to the cabin this year. We went with Shannon and Dennis uh, to Pigeon Forge. And, well, we actually went to Cherokee and then drove over to Dollywood. Uh, anyway, uh, so we're back tonight, hallelujah, and i um, glad to see all of you, praise the Lord. Um, as we said in the beginning, you know, the Bible teaches us that we are heirs to the promise of God through Abraham, amen? If ye be Christ, Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, if ye be Christ possessive, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So the promise that God gave to Abraham, there was not to seeds as of many, but as of one, which is Christ. But then Paul goes on to, and, and makes it very clear that, that that seed of Christ is, if ye be Christ, possessed by Christ, remember this, um, we are one in him. We are the body of Christ. Then, um, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And so God has a lot of promises in the Bible. Amen. The biggest promise that God gave to Abraham, which is very inclusive, it has an expanse to it, and very inclusive is that I will, I will, um, in multiplying, I will multiply thee, and blessing, I will bless thee. Okay. Now the Weymouth New Testament says, uh, I will bless thee and bless thee, and increase thee and increase thee. So we we simplify it by this: God will bless us and increase us. Okay. That was Romans 16, 4, I believe, okay, um, the, where he says the King James, I will, in multiplying, I will multiply thee, and in blessing, I will bless thee. Weymouth says, I will bless thee and bless thee and increase thee and increase thee. So the blessing of Abraham is a blessing of blessing. Now, blessing covers so much. Amen? And increase. It is not, a, it is not decrease. It, decrease is not a blessing. All right? And so um, we have this. Now, here, here's what we have to understand. It's there. It's available. It, but it belongs to you. Say, the blessing of Abraham belongs to me. Because I am Christ possessive. I am Christ possessive. Okay? And he's the seed. Say, he's the seed. And I'm in Christ. Therefore, I'm the seed. Amen. Now that's what Paul said. You know, you're making, no, no, no. Paul said it. I think Paul had a good grip on it. Just saying. He wrote most of the New Testament doctrine. Paul actually wrote the in him reality doctrine in the Bible. That is Paul's revelation. Who we are in Christ Jesus. One of them, and, and um, where, where the people are right now. <laughs> I'm going to be very vague, but you know who I'm talking about right now. Their country does not, uh, does not have a word or a concept of righteousness or right standing. One of the most important revelations in the Bible, and they don't even have a concept or a word that can relate it. That's crazy. That means that, you know, you got to come up, you have to figure out how to use enough vernacular to create the concept. Okay. Can, can you imagine having, uh, you know, justification, righteousness, and we couldn't even tell you that, you know, you are, you're justified by Christ and you would go, what's that mean? There's no, we don't even have a, you know, they don't even have the concept of it in their culture. Why? Because devils are running stuff. All right. So anyway. We have this blessing. We are heirs of the promise. We are, we are heirs of the promise. It belongs to us. Isn't that great? Say, woo! 
Come on. Woo! How do you get it? How do you appropriate what you own or have right to? There we go. Okay, we're on the right path there. We do it through words. We have to speak. Brother Hagin used to say this. He said, some folks think they're going to go through life and the blessings of God are going to follow them like ripe cherries off a tree. Let me just go ahead and tell you, if you have not already experienced this, that ain't true. Okay? They just don't come knocking you down. All right? You know, there's, there, there's activity on your part. There are things you need to do on your end for them to be, uh, be acquired or be accessed. Okay. How many have bank accounts of some kind? Now, does it just, you know, you, you think, you're thinking over there, man, I need, I need 50 bucks. Does it just show up at your house? Does it? All right. No. Uh, let's, let's maybe make this more in line. Um, I open up a bank account in your name and put a million dollars in there. Give you the bank. Yeah, you like that, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, go ahead, Pastor. <laughs> um, and I give you the account number, the routing number, you know, it's in your name and all this stuff. And you're sitting there going, I got a million dollars. Man, that's awesome. I'm going down to the car dealership and I'm going to buy me a brand new car. I'm not going to buy one of them little, you know, electronic smart cars from, you know, Renault. As my daddy used to call it. We had a little, we had a Renault when I was a kid and he called it an alt 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 not ever been made. <laughs> I mean, it was so whatever that we had the, Ren actually it's Renault. I know I'm saying French is Renault, but we had, we had the Renault and then we had the parts Renault. Same car didn't run, but it had parts. <laughs> so it was parked out in the field. If you needed something, you had to go take the part off, take it down to the mechanic so he could put it on there. <laughs> yeah. And so you're going to go buy you a, oh, let's see here. Not, not an electric car. Forget those. Uh, you're going to go buy you a, oh, Jeep Grand Wagoneer loaded to the gills. Now, I don't know about y'all. Have y'all seen how much they cost? They're from eighty to hundred thousand dollars for the uh, for the because they brought back the wagoneer. They're between eighty and hundred grand. I'm thinking that costs more than my first house, you know. And uh, I mean, it's going to depreciate in seven years. You won't get but maybe fifteen for it or whatever, you know. Um, but you're going to go buy one. You get down to the dealership. You walk in. You sit down with the guy and said, "Well, uh, I got a million dollars in the bank. I want to buy this." <laughs> he said, "Okay," um, and you, I'm going to pay cash. I want to pay cash. All right, give me your best deal. Here, here it is. We'll knock ten thousand off because you're gonna buy it with cash. Okay. Ready to pay? I have it. Where is it? I have it. Yeah, but I don't. And then you're I'm selling you the car, the wagoneer. Now, how are you gonna get it from you have it to me have it? So you can have the vehicle. Well, I have it. See, you're not accessing it. Because see, you got the router number, you got the account number, you got all you need, all the stuff you need. You're going to have to go do something to get that money out of the account into his hand so you can get that vehicle in your driveway. Okay? That process would mean you have to make a withdrawal. Now, you have the right to do it. You have a legal right to it. But until you make the withdrawal, you ain't getting the vehicle. It's going to sit down there, and if you don't show up soon enough, he's going to sell it to somebody else. Hey, that's my vehicle. I had the money. No, well, you had the money, but I didn't get the money. And since I didn't get the money, the person who did get the money got the car. And we got a lot of Christians running around there who are fussing about the fact that somebody else is getting their blessings but they're not doing what they need to do for it to work for them. Okay? <clears throat> so the bank, the blessing of Abraham is to your account. Now, <clears throat> the way that we as believers function, God established it. Remember in Genesis where it says, and, and, and God breathed into man the breath of life and made him a living soul? In Hebrew, that literally says a speaking spirit. Speaking. 
Okay, so go to Genesis chapter one. I'm going to just going to run over a few things here, because God established certain things in this order of how they work. All right. All right. Now, Genesis one one says, "In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth." All right. Verse three, it goes, "And God said, let there be light,' and there was light." What did God do? He spoke it. And God said, down in verse 6, And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters. What did he do? He spoke. Verse 9, And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear as it was. And so it was. What did God do? Verse 11, let, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit of the tree yielding seed after his kind, whose seed is in itself uh, upon the earth. And it was so. What did he do? Verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide one day from the night and let them be for a sign and for seasons and for years, uh, days and years. Hallelujah. What did God do? He spoke. Verse 20. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving, and, uh, the moving creature that hath life, the fowl they may fly above the earth in the open firmament of the heavens. What did God do? He spoke. Hallelujah. Verse 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle, creeping thing, beast of the earth, and after his kind. And it was so. What did God do? Verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the sea and over the fowl of the air and, and, and over um, every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, side thought here. Thank God we got authority over creeps. <laughs> Amen. He said, let them have dominion over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. You got authority over creeps. Hallelujah. Just like to throw that in there. Um, so God created man in his image, uh, created he him, male and female created he them. Now we find in the next verse, they actually formed him from the dust of the, I mean, next chapter, he formed him from the dust of the ground and breathed into him separately. Now, but everything that was done in creation, God spoke. The only, only difference was God said his intention was to um, create man, and then he specially formed him. Okay, everything else. Now, very interesting phrase found in Hebrews chapter one. Uh, run over here with me, if you will. Hebrews chapter one and verse three. Uh, we might as well read, read uh, one through three just for the fun of it. And it's good, so it won't hurt you to read it. If the word hurts you. It's because you, you, you got your feelings in the wrong place. God, who at sundry times and in, in time, uh, spake in time past unto the fathers of by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, by whom he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person, listen to this, underline this, upholding all things by the word of his power. Okay, that's where I wanted to stop. Now, what we have here in operation is called the law of Genesis. It's referred to theologically as the law of Genesis. God spoke. God spoke. But he created man in his likeness and him in his image after his kind. And he created him a speaking spirit. So we are to speak. Now, I grew up good old Pentecostal try not to call it a denomination because I don't want, I'm not trying to put anybody down from the time that I was growing up. But I grew up a classical Pentecostal. Okay? And um, we didn't do a whole lot of speaking. All right? They didn't, they didn't even understand that concept. Okay? I mean, when it came to speaking in tongues, it was, you know, it was, it was, it was a drill to get, get tongues out of them. Okay? And so, this concept of speaking things into existence. Because, I mean, let's face it, we, we would fall into that sovereignty thing. 
Whatever happens, God had a reason. And we would speak unbelief and negativity all the time. We just, we just, I mean, we'd serve it up on a platter. Like we were a French sous chef. Yeah. C'est très bon, uh, très mal, très, very, uh, très, très mal. Um, but this is what she wants. You know, this is what you ordered. This morning we went to BFAC. Anybody know Biscuit Factory over in High Point? But they call it BFAC, okay? Um, that's what all the kids call it. You know, we asked my kids went to Western, they all called Biscuit Factory. Not Biscuitville, but the Biscuit Factory. Big biscuits. They got a smoked sausage, egg, and cheese. Hallelujah. You drive up and you say, ha! Glory to God. I want a smoky egg and cheese. They don't call them smoked sausage. They just call them a smoky. All right. Janie got a smoky cheese. Of course, this morning when we ordered, we went out and we just pulled around and sit in the car. We don't sit at the tables because they were made for uh, Asians. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah, they're about that wide between the front table and the back. And you're like, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> it's a good dieting table. Because you can't get all your food down sitting at that table. And, um, Opened up her biscuit, and it was a regular sausage. Hup, two, three, four. Not her, not her, me. Back into the restaurant, you know. Uh, this was supposed to have been a smoky cheese. And, um, okay. Well, you know, and they passed it and went to the kitchen. The girl stuck her head said, I'm sorry. I said, not your fault. They wrote it down wrong. <laughs> I looked at them. Oh, they wrote it wrong. They wrote smoked, I mean, they wrote small sausage. I wanted to smoke you. And if you don't tell them what you want, you won't get it. Oh, this is what I was going for. But going good classical Pentecostal, we would have prayer. Pretty much every service we'd offer prayer. You know, do we have any prayer requests today? Or brother, pastor, sister, so and so, da 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 da. Well, pastor, I got this going on, da 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 da. You know, we were going to pray about it corporately. But then they would ask this question: Do we have any unspoken request? Now, to a child, I'm still thinking. I'm thinking about there, how can you have an unspoken request? You know, you know how, how the, uh, the old church women used to sit. They sit with their arms kind of like this, you know, or something like this. And then they say unspoken request, they go, I'm going to agree with that. How can I agree what I don't know I'm agreeing to? You know, I say this a lot, and I, 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 you know, I kind of do it in jest, but it's true. Try driving up to a restaurant that has a drive through window with the speaker out there, and you pull up and they say, can I help you? Yeah, I got an unspoken order. Well, did you text it in? Nope. It's a, non -not it's a non notified request, order. Well, sir, I can't help you if you don't tell me what you want. What do you mean? Isn't this a fast food uh, service line, drive through line? You said you wanted to help me? My order's unspoken. Guess what you're going to drive away with that day? Not a thing. Why are you, you going to drive away with nothing? Because they can't service. They can't accommodate your desire because they don't know what it is. But God knows everything. Yeah, but he's the one who said, call unto me and answer me, and I will show you great and hidden things that I know it's not. Amen. He said, he, he, ha he has it throughout the word. You have, to, you have to ask. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. But he said, ask and you shall receive. Okay? Come on now. You've got to. Be, uh, look over here in James real quick. If you don't ask, you can't get it. Y'all here? Gone home. All right. Here is very interesting. Look at he, James chapter 4, everybody. Then that's 1,537 in my Kenneth E. Hagan uh, reference of the Legacy Bible. Yours probably is not on page 1,537. All right. Ye ask and receive not. Okay. I'm sorry. Back at verse 2. Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have. Cannot obtain. Ye fight in war. Yet ye have not. Ye have not because 
ye ask not. Ye ask not. Ye ask and receive not, because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. All right? Here we are. James states you don't have it because you don't ask for it. And if you are asking for it and don't get it, it's because you're not asking right. Ask amiss. Now, the Greek word for ask in this passage is ateo, A-I-T-E-O, the very same word in the Greek in Mark chapter 11, verse um, 24, uh, verse 23, 24, okay? Actually, verse 24. And when ye stand praying, believe that ye receive, amen, and ye shall have, okay? What sort of things you ask for? Um, believe that you receive. Now, ask. Whatever you're praying, well, you could put ask there. And whatever you ask for, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. Same Greek word in both places. There they translated it pray, and James they translated it ask. Same Greek word. And it means that. It means to ask or to pray. It's a request. Because prayer can be a request. Prayer can be communion with God. Prayer can be a lot of, you know, there's a lot of different phases to the word prayer. It can be worshiping. Okay, it can be communing. It can be believing you received, asking for to, to receive something. Well, what are you asking for? You're really asking for your access into the blessing of Abraham. The things that were provided to you by the seed through his death, burial, and resurrection, the consummation of that promise of God, now you can ask for it and receive it. The law of Genesis established an asking and uh, action taking place because of what you ask. It was done through asking, through speaking. Amen. So the words of your mouth, amen. Now, what is, now turn, if you will, to the 11th chapter of Mark. We were just quoting from there. Uh, looking down, verse 12, you remember in verse 12, um, they were on their way into the city. And Jesus, and Jesus was hungry and, and saw a fig tree afar off and he came to it by, for happily he might find figs thereon. But when he got there, there was none because the time of the figs was not yet. That's why I said happily, meaning by chance, possibly. Why? Because the, the fig tree buds out its leaves when it has figs. It's, the, it's kind of a simultaneous event. It gets, its, it gets figs when the leaves come. And so here's a fig tree out of season with leaves. So it's saying, listen, listen, it's saying I've got figs. That's what it's saying. It's declaring I have figs. I've got leaves, I've got figs. Jesus thinks, well, you know, I know, he knows. He grew up in that part of the world. He knows it's had a season. But he's hungry. It's got leaves. So he runs over there and happily might have the leaves. And uh, but there was none there on. And Jesus answered it. <laughs> Are you here? He spoke back. It said, hey, I got figs. Jesus kid, there with no figs. And he answered it. Isn't that what it says? No man eat fruit of the hereafter forever. And when is Mary on a little way? Amen. On the morrow, so they went into town, you know, that's when all the money changer things got turned over and all that stuff. Went back out, came back in. And uh, on the way by, Peter calling to his remembrance, saying, Master, behold, the victory of thy curse is withered away. We're down here around verse 20, 21. Well, that about verse 21. Because in verse 22, he goes, what? Verily, verily, I say unto you, uh, have faith in God. Or the faith of God. Now, the, the Greek structure there can be, have the faith of God, faith in, the faith of God, faith in God. Okay? Really, in this passage, and I'm going to explain to you why later, it's referring to having the faith of God. Operate in the faith of God. 
Verse 23 starts out, it says this, For verily I say unto you, Now, what's, now King Jimmy, uh, verily, is like an oath. Okay? Of a surety, an oath. Technically, I swear. Amen? For verily I say unto you, that whosoever, how many people here are a whosoever? Rita, put your hand up. You're a whosoever. <laughs> okay. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. Ooh. See, it's not just speaking. It's speaking what you believe. All right. Shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe, but believeth the things which he saith. Amen. Shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Then we got the whosoever's speaking what they believe, and they get the whatsoever they believed. What they were saying. They're getting what they were saying. Now remember, you can have the blessings of Abraham at your disposal and want to acquire from that disposal what's available. But Jesus said in order to get what you want, what things shall you, then verse 24 says, and what things shall ye desire when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Now pray is, again, the Greek word of Theo, meaning to ask. It's what? Asking is you do what when you ask for something? You speak. You speak. Amen? So he says, what things shall ever ye desire? Now we understand, amen, that <clears throat> what we desire, uh, remember James, we've got James. See, if you just take certain scriptures and run off with them, well, I can have somebody else's wife, and I can have somebody else's husband, I can have whatever. No, because James says you, receive, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss. That you may what? Consume it. On your own lust. Now, the word lust in the Greek is used in both places, same word. It can mean desire, strong desire, good or evil. It's the context. If you're asking amiss that you may consume it upon your lust, then it's evil. But if we're asking for the things of God, we have a strong desire for the things of God, then it's not evil. <clears throat> Amen. Now, how do we govern that? <laughs> By what you feed on. Amen. What are you asking for? See, when we've got scriptures that already tell you, am I, am I out, of the, out of the light, Dick? I'm okay. Okay. We already have scriptures that tell us to look on another man's wife, to lust after her. You've committed adultery already. So you can't say God said I can have her, I can have whatsoever I say, I desire her, but the right words already told you that's wrong. And James says if you ask for it because it's wrong, if you ask for something that is wrong, you don't get it. God's not going to bless you with somebody else's wife. Well, look what the Lord has done. Yeah, the Lord of the flies, Beelzebub. All right? Another name for the devil. So, <clears throat> so let's lay that, let's, let's put that as part of our parameters. Now, we are to receive the blessing of Abraham. You are not to receive the inordinate lust and desires of your flesh. Now, he that desires a wife desires a good thing. He that desires somebody else's wife is an adulterer. Okay? Period. I mean, I knew of a, of a minister, pastor of a church. And, um, you know, he was married, had a, had a, a, either an organist or a pianist. And they were, they were at the church singing, my baby does the hanky panky. Dun, 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 dun. They were doing some hanky panky. Yeah. Got caught. They divorced each other. I mean, the, the, the her, the, uh, the hanky panky player and the hanky panky doer divorced their spouses, went up to another church further north. And they had already made a plan. They were going to restore them to ministry and put them and, and lay hands on them, and put them back out in ministry. Well, that wasn't the blessing of the Lord. That wasn't God. Now, 
What can you do in that case? The only thing you can do, number one, is publicly repent for what you did. You know, everybody's gotten remarried, whatever. Okay, but you've got to repent. You have no validity unless you do. Okay? And you can't go around and say, the Lord. I mean, we had, a, we had a, one of the leading Christian artists got making some music video and ended up uh, getting it on. I don't know if he was singing uh, a little Marvin Gaye or not. Ow! Let's get it on. <laughs> Apparently they were because they were getting it on. And everybody, you know, everybody tried to defend the person. And they, they said, that, listen, here's simple. You sinned. Acknowledge you sin. Don't make. And we don't had a special on TV where they. It was such a love story. They did a whole ABC special about this this artist, this Christian music artist, about <coughs> you know this love story. David and Bathsheba want a love story. It was a love story. Come on now. Are you here? That's all it is. The only the, the lesson we get out of is God can restore and God can give you another chance, but you can't look at the, oh David and Bathsheba what oh I came out of the theater crying it was such a love story that was a love story. Hello, the man committed murder, conspiracy to commit murder, committed murder, stayed behind in Jerusalem when the it's time of the year for the kings to go to battle. Apparently, word got to the king that there was a ladies going out on the top of the roof, bathing, y'all get this, but naked. And so David stayed behind and went up on the roof and watched, to, apparently, and said, go get that one. Because king's going to have the highest place in the, cat, in, the, in the kingdom. Okay? Goes into her. She ends up getting pregnant. He's got to call the man home, tries to kill him, whatever. Now, so, you can't ask for what the word prohibits. That's not faith. Wow. Faith begins where the will of God is known. So if you're going to speak, I mean, <clears throat> I'm, I'm trying not to ramble, but I'm begging. I'm going to. I had somebody come to me in church one time. Now, this, is, this has been a number of years ago. They had a, um, had a woman. No, no, no. They, they, we sold cigarettes and, you know, and stuff and, and vending machines, put them in restaurants and stuff. <clears throat> and um, they came to me. Pastor Ed. We got this great business opportunity. Okay, what is it? Well, it's filling up vending machines. Okay, what kind? <laughs> they wouldn't tell me. They wanted the blessings. You know, well, it's cigarettes. But we're going to tithe on it. Well, I could have gone, you know, classical Pentecostal, man, I would have barbecued you if I'd just been in Pentecostal church. If God wanted you to smoke cigarettes, he'd put a smokestack on your head. You want to smell like hell when you come to church? Go ahead on. Yes. <laughs> Telling we were we I left church more than once. The feet of my the soles of my feet had melted from the fire and brimstone they had brought up in church. I mean, they're gonna put you in hell, baby. Um, but God give grant God granted me wisdom. Because I could have gone, well, you're that's sin, you don't need to be doing that, you're wrong. But they would go, where's the scripture? So I said this, okay, let me, let, me, let me just ask you to do one thing. When you get your vending machine in there and you walk in there with your box, of, you know, different varieties of cigarettes, before you fill that machine up, I want you to lay your hands on the cigarettes and say, Lord, I fill this vending machine up for your glory and for your honor. May you get praise for it in Jesus' name. And left him alone. He came back about two weeks later and said, I see what you mean. <laughs> they couldn't pray that. You see, they had justified because they were going to tithe. Yeah, you're going to get the preacher to do what you want to do? Tell him I'm going to give him more money. Not this one. It don't work. We've been there about bankrupt in the church in the years. We've been there. We couldn't hardly pay, pay to keep the water on. I mean, we face all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> and it seems like at that time is when the guy shows up who wants to buy influence with you. They can put a lot of money in the church. I can't be bought. 
I can't be bought. I will go without food before you have influence over the church, over what God wants done. Hello? Guy came in. He was an Amway guy. What are you going to do for this church what we did for so-and-so's down in Rocky Mount? Oh, really? He's taking me to lunch because he wanted to get me into Amway. One of the narratives back in the, like, the 80s and stuff, and the 80s and 90s on Amway was you get the pastor, you get the church, and you, you raise your, your uh, status in the, the trying to get to that double diamond level. I said, he, and when he said that, I said, let me, let me say something here. I stopped him. The Bible says that Abraham said, uh, that I'll ha not have it known that any man made Abraham rich. You're not going to do, you're not, the only person who will get glory for this church and what gets done is God. And then I didn't, I went on further. I didn't stop there because my righteous indignation had gotten stirred and I was ticked and said, and one more thing. The first time I catch you in the back of the church with one of my members telling them that because they work for somebody else, they're in a rut, which is nothing but a, a grave with both ends kicked out. I will personally come back there, pick you up by the seat of the pants, and throw you out the front door. Are we clear? I was younger and bigger and stronger. Okay? He never came back. No, sir. I will throw your back in right out the door. Why? Because telling somebody they can't work for anybody else or they're, you know, they're in a rut. What if your gifting is working for somebody else? Who are you to say? No, you want them in your downline. Why? Because you make money off of their downline. <clears throat> you make money from all the bozos who buy into the built to live a marketing thing, and they're buying enough product each month to keep, to keep into the organization, and you're getting your cut if all they are doing is buying enough to stay in because they showed you yachts and they showed you fancy cars and all this kind of stuff. <coughs> so attitude heart has to be right. So what are we to pursue? We are to pursue what God says we can have. Now I remember when God tried to get me in the, in the Amway before this, he said, this is God's way of blessing. You mean God can only use Amway? I guess God is a triple diamond up at the top of Amway. Hey, but some guy that was, that was coming with this group brought a, an audio tape of a service at the such and such family reunion in Tennessee, about 10,000 people. And they were singing songs about Amway like we sing about Jesus. And not long after that, ABC did a special, and they had a, bit, had a tape from a guy who was high up, and he was, he was basically preaching to the people in the meeting. If my wife came home today and told me it was Amway or her, I'd choose Amway because I knew how, I know how it changed my life. I know what it's done for me. I mean, this is, it's just playing this, ABC's playing this on the, on the thing. <coughs> and they're speaking of Amway as a deity, as, as God, as Jesus. So, we have to know what the Word says so that when we're speaking, we're speaking in line with the Word. Amen? So, we're to make a confession. The Word of God says God watcheth over His Word to perform it. Now, very interesting thing. Um, to confess has, a, has a, a, not a strict, but a, a, a um, literal meaning of to say the same thing as. What does Joshua 1 8 say? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. What? That thou mayest observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Literally, Hebrew, deal wisely in the affairs of life. Wow. So, there are parameters around this blessing. See, it's the blessing of Abraham. It is not the blessing of the flesh. 
It is a blessing of increase and multiplication. It is what God has said he will do. Amen. You can't drop all that and just run off with, you know, Brother Hagin had a book called, has, has it still, it's out, it's still in print. You can have what you say. And a lot of people saw the title and thought that was a doctrine. So they're just running around going, well, I have this. And I have. No, no, no. Read the little mini book. It's only 32 little bitty, little bitty pages. It's not a whole lot there. Probably about five pages regular, regular length. Okay? So it's, a little, it's like a sermonette. You just can't have anything you, you think of. We start this whole thing off with the blessing of Abraham. What God, God's not going to bless you with the ability to get what he deems wrong. Amen. I know you got the gracers out there who say, you know, I'm already pre-forgiven, so it don't matter what I do. I can, you know, um, you know, I can go do whatever I want to do, and I'm already pre-forgiven, so it don't even matter. Beat your head against the wall. And I think I will. Just you know, go right over here, grab a wall, and go. Okay? I used to do that against cinder block walls to intimidate people. Now you know why I act the way I act. <laughs> no, literally, I would. In high school, somebody come give me a lot of mouth, I'd just turn around and hit the cinder block wall in my head and go, bam! Will mess with me? <laughs> Man, hey, don't mess with crazy. <laughs> you know, crazy is just dangerous. You know, there's a lot of things you don't want to face. Crazy is one of them. Okay? That just is true. So we, we can't just like erase this, erase that, and forget this, and forget where this came from. See, we're going we're gonna to receive what? The blessing of Abraham through words. We're going to find what's available to us through what? His word. We find out that healing belongs to us. How, well, how do we know that he, I am Jehovah Rapha. I am the covenant God who heals you. See? When he said in the Old Testament, oh, none of these diseases will I bring on thee, you know, if you, so forth and so on. Because uh, for I am, and the King James says, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Hebrew is, he is Jehovah Rapha. Really not even Jehovah, it's the tet, uh, tet, tetramatic, uh, grammatin, tetragrammatin or whatever. Okay? The Y-H-W-H. Okay? The he, which is the covenant name of God. So this is a covenant, remember? That healeth thee, Rapha, that heals thee. Or the Lord thy physician. Now, I can approach God and receive out of this blessing that he has bestowed upon Abraham because I know the word says he's my physician. Amen. And so I'm going to confess or say the same thing as what he says. Go, to, if you will, to the um, 55th chapter of the book of Isaiah. <laughs> And how far I've gotten my notes, I didn't even get to the first point. Are you surprised? I did notice the last time I said, what does it mean when pastor says he's about to close? Nobody answered. Um, <laughs> why? Because they figured out they were making the wrong confession of saying absolutely nothing. <laughs> Well, that's what you were getting, too. Absolutely. It meant absolutely nothing. And they say, mm, I ain't confessing that. I mean, the biblical thing would be to say, Pastor said he's about to close. He's about to close. I don't like it when you say that because I really wasn't planning on closing right then. Now, look what God says in Isaiah 55, 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. So what's God saying? I have a higher standard. I have a higher position. Amen? For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now let's look here. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be. Now stop. What 
are we? We are, the, we are the seed of Abraham, heirs according to the promise. Now God says that the word, amen, the word, so as the rains come down from the heaven and so thither, so shall my word be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Stop. So how, if it's not going to return, how would it return to him void? We speak it back. If you want blessed results, say what God says about it. Because he says it's not going to be void. It will prosper in the thing he sent it to do. Amen. He sent his word and healed them. Amen. He sent his word and healed them. The word of God. So we now come into what we call confession. Okay. Now there's a confession of sin, you, you know, confession of Jesus Christ, a uh, confession of sin. And, and really, when we confess sin, we are working on a, a restoration of our own soul. Amen? Because the blood of Jesus is already continually cleansing us from all unrighteousness. But your, your soul needs to have that refreshing or that, that renewal on sin that you've committed. Amen? Not just go, well, praise the Lord, hallelujah, it didn't matter, I did it because I was already forgiven. No, that's, that's going to mess up your head. You're going to create stinking thinking. And eventually, you're going to come to one of these church services with me preaching, and you're going to get a checkup from the neck up. Hello? You get you straightened out. Now just go ahead and confess it. So we have, we get, but then the other confession we, we do in the Word of God as a Christian is we confess what God said. We speak the Word. Remember the centurion who came to Jesus, said, uh, Master, my servant lieth at home. Um, will you come and heal him? And Jesus said, you know, he said, uh, and Jesus said, I'll come. He said, well, I'm not worthy you should come under my roof. Okay? For I'm, a, you know, I'm a man of authority, and I have servants under me who I say, go, and he goeth, to another come, and he cometh. So speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. And Jesus marveled and said, I've not found so great a faith, no, not, not in all of Israel. Go thy way, be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And his servant was healed. But what did he tell him to do? Speak the word. He, he would, Jesus, all you, get, you don't have to come lay hands on him, just speak it. Because words have authority, words have power. Amen. So as a speaking spirit, we, listen, we can establish bad results or good results by how we talk. Y'all hear you going home? Yeah. You can establish good or bad. It is governed by the words of your mouth. How many, how many times in the past, you know, country folks, was, you, I mean, let's just be real honest with you, were some of the most negative talking people on the planet. Your daddy was a drunk. You're going to be a drunk. He died a drunk. You'll die a drunk. And the kid dies as a drunk, and you wonder why, because it's all you ever said. How many ever heard of a guy named Elvis Presley? <laughs> heard of Elvis? Huh? You know, he was just a hunk of hunk of burn. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So Elvis, that's a terrible imitation, I know, but, you know, you got you laughing. All right. J.D. Sumner, you remember Elvis had traveled with a, with a it was really a southern gospel group, southern quartet named J.D. Sumner and the Stamps. Okay? Now, he had several difficulties, but the one that he really liked was J.D. Sumner and the Stamps. All right? They'd sit up till 3, 4 o'clock in the morning after the concerts and sit at the piano and sing Southern Gospel. It gave him peace. It's the only way he could get, that was where he got peace, singing the old hymns. But J.D. Sumner said this. He said, if I heard him say it once, I heard him say it 10,000 times. 
basically this, uh, kind of paraphrase here, I'll die the same age my mother did. And he did. He did. He set that on course. And you watched him in the last, which else died, like 77? Something like that, 77? You remember the comeback concert was in 68 or 69? What, anybody remember? The, M the NBC special, the comeback concert, like 68, 69? He was basically Elvis, that, you know, that skinny, you know, um, hip. I mean, you know, give you a backache watching it. Okay. From there, he went to, he bloated. Those last years, he just bloated to a balloon. Okay. I mean, he tried to wear that the outfit he always wore, the you know, thing down here, you know, and it was stretched on out, you know. I mean, it won't nothing sexy about that. Now, there were some women out there who thought he was, but it was on the it was on the, a, a past image. It wasn't. I mean, he had said it and said it and said it and said it and said it, and he, his body. I know he's doing you know doing all the stuff, you know the, the, subs, the substance abuse and everything, but his body began to obey what he was saying to the point it killed him. Your words are important. Then God like I don't believe in that stuff. When it's your time, it's your time. Really? Well, the psalmist said, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Well, I'm going to tell you, in your 40s and early 50s ain't long. Hello? Amen. So we speak life, we speak death. Li the uh, the um, proverb says, life and death are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Well, let's just put it this way. Blessing and cursing is in the power of the tongue. You can receive from the kingdom of life or the kingdom of death by your tongue. So. If you want the blessing of Abraham, we have to move into that vein where we're speaking life. We're speaking what the Word promises you, what the Word says. I mean, you can go to people and quote Bible to them, and because they, they, they don't believe in any of this stuff. I mean, church-going folk, deacon at the, on the board of such and such church. Hello? The primitive, the southern, the hard shell, whoever else. You know? They're all, they're all, they're all, you know, I don't believe in that stuff. Well, it's working pretty good for you because you don't believe it. You don't believe, you don't believe saying something negative is going to hurt you. Well, I don't know why that happened. Have you ever heard your mouth? Hello? You got to change what you say. Well, how do you do that? Well, a good man out of the good treasure is heart bringing forth good things. Well, how do you get it in your heart? You meditate in the Word. Meditate in the Word day and night. Meditate, Joshua 1, 8. You will meditate in the Word day and night. You may observe to do according to all that's written therein. You've got to spend time meditating in that Word to get it in you. Why? So when you need it, you pull it out. Amen. Now, um, I don't even think there's a bank in Pleasant Garden, is there? Is there a bank? Not anymore. Oh, had, y'all had one. <laughs> one. Wow. <laughs> they had one. Maybe I'll start Expedition Church Bank. <laughs> I don't know. Um, go up to, just drive up the road. Go find your bank somewhere. Walk up to the witness. I want to draw some money. You have an account with us? Nope. I never put anything in here. I'm well, sorry, sir. I can't give you anything. Why not? You're a bank, aren't you? Yeah, but you haven't made any deposits. And if you don't make deposits, you can't withdraw. If you don't make spiritual deposits, you're not going to be able to withdraw. You got to put the word in you to get the word out of you. Amen. Now the blessing is already established, and the way you receive out of that is you make spiritual deposits of what the word promises you, so that what you speak is in line with God, and you are agreeing with God about what He wants you to have, and you get it. It'll work. I said it'll work. I said it will work. That's the way God established it. 
That's the way God set it up. Well, I know God's done stuff for me. Yeah, listen, that's just called mercy. People have been healed on mercy. Didn't believe a thing and got it. Well, that's just that's just mercy. Okay, that's just a demonstration of the mercy of God. But that's not how you live. You can't live on God doing everything without you even being involved in it in faith at all, no matter what. Don't work that way. I said, don't work that way. Now, God does have mercy. But let me say this. I would just about guarantee you, I can't, I can't guarantee, but just about guarantee you, that if somebody's getting something from God they're not even believing for, not trying to believe for, don't believe for it, and they get it, some little intercessor in the world has been in their prayer closet praying in the Spirit and asking God to do something for so-and-so out of his mercy, and they've prayed that out in the Spirit, and God's done it because they asked him to. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Y'all hear you go home. Um, Charles, I believe Charles Wesley said, it seems God can do nothing in the earth except someone ask him. Okay, I believe it was Charles. I don't think it was John. I think it was Charles Wesley said that. It seems that God could do nothing in the earth except someone ask him. Now, he's not making a definitive statement, but he's, his experience taught him that if things were happening, that somebody was, was praying and asking God to do it. And he was, he was responding to their request and doing it. Because see, living in the blessing of God is not always going to be about you. It includes you, but it's not always about you. Because God loves humanity. Amen. Did I ever finish Isaiah 55? Well, were y'all listening or not? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. As I said, where into I sent it? All right. Got it. I just wanted to make sure you were listening. You're supposed to keep me on track. All right. Praise the Lord. So we're going we're gonna to reclaim this blessing, or we're going to claim the blessing, we're going to access the blessing. And I call it this, by employing your divine apparatus, your mouth. Your mouth can get you in trouble and then get you in the blessing. Now, I got kids at school. You think, if you would just shut up, you'd stay out of trouble. But no, they got to have their say. They got to, you know, they got to call you an M blanker and all this. Kind of, if you would just, and, and of course, now, i just be honest with you. I'm saved, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. But it still stirs some type of primal desire to knock his teeth down his throat when he calls me an M whatever or a racist or whatever because I'm white and I told him he had to do something, you know. It just, it, and I have to, I have to, you know, just shut up. <laughs> okay? You know, you, you can, a boy can stir it up in a heartbeat. You know, and you're like, but I'm saved. Yeah, but you still got flesh. <laughs> you know, if you would shut up and listen to what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to help you learn how to be successful in life. But you want to go home and get your check and not do anything. Honestly, I'm trying to teach you, to give you skills that will help you in life to succeed. That's my, I'm a job coach. Okay. I, I take kids out and teach them how to work. And if they didn't want to know how to work, they picked the wrong guy. Because I believe in work ethic and work integrity. Yep. You know, this is son. When I was your age, I was, I was priming back and hanging sticks in a stick barn climbing up and down tiers, going out in the fields in the rain. I mean, lightning, you're out there priming tobacco, going up to the barn, and, and then playing tricks on the ladies that, that loop the tobacco onto the sticks and getting a knife pulled on you. We, we kill it. You know, anybody know what a poplar is? It's, it's a poisonous snake. And they, they'd be in the fields up next to the, the tobacco stalks. We'd kill it in the field, 
And then we go out to the trailer they took up to the barn and put that snake up on the top leaf and wrap it up and then put a tobacco leaf on top of it. <laughs> you could hear them in the fields. <laughs> and when you got to the barn, that snuff was coming out here and that hawk knife was over here. <laughs> I don't know which one did it, but you ever do it again, I'll cut you. <laughs> I believe him. <laughs> you were just young and dumb. You didn't know that they were serious. <laughs> Hallelujah. It seemed like a good idea at the time. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> anyway. But if people, you know, like these kids, if they would just, yes, sir, and walk away, there would be no confrontation, there would be no problems, no blow-ups, nothing. None of it. Okay? You say the right things, you do the right things, you don't have any problems. Honestly. That works in marriage relationships. It works in church relationships. It works all over the place. Amen. This is sometimes you just need to shut up. And when you want to spew, out, spew and spout and just vomit unbelief, you need to shut up. The psalmist said, Lord, put a watch over my mouth. Where? Where? Mouth that he might not what? Sin against thee. Lord, David said this, Lord, put a watch over my mouth that I might not sin against thee what sin unbelief speaking contrary to what he said getting out of agreement with him because he's trying to bless you he wants to pour blessings on you he wants to do good things for you but no flat jaw has got to go run your mouth with unbelief because you're so full so full of doubt and unbelief why because that's what you feed on if you're not feeding on the word you're feeding on something Hello. And let me tell you something. As the world turns, the young and the restless, the edge of night, and whatever else they have out there, I don't even know if those soap operas are still on the air. And I'm glad none of y'all know. That's great. <laughs> I finally changed the name of the young and the restless to the old and the relentless. As the stomach churns, okay, and on the edge of destruction. Horrible acting, horrible storylines, you know, just freezing and going, ding, ding, ding. Would you like to use ivory soap? <laughs> I guess one of the best ones was Dark Shadows, the vampire soap opera. Anybody remember Barnabas? Some of y'all watch Dark Shadows. Did you watch it, Janice? Yeah. I grew up at home. That's what we did during the summer. You had to watch Dark Shadows because if you wanted to see TV, you had to watch Dark Shadows. Yeah. They talk like they were real. Why? Because what you feed on becomes part of your persona. Hello. So feed on the word. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. My word goeth forth out of my mouth, and it will accomplish. Well, how do I get that working? Because you speak what he says. You come into agreement with what he says. And in doing so, this book of the law should not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate. The word meditate literally means mutter. It is not getting in this weird position going, hum, hum, lighting incense, these funny, funky smelling. I remember back, back, back if you're old enough, you remember the 70s. Incense were the thing. I hated them. Go to people's house and they're burning incense. You're like, God, that is nasty. Why would you sit around and smell that stuff? It's just nasty. Dick, did you ever do that? Yes, okay. <laughs> Had to admit it. Okay. You know. Okay. You, you, okay. That's not what I'm talking about. When the Bible says meditate, it means to muse, to mutter. Now, you've all muttered before, haven't you? You had the hammer, you had the nail, and you got the wrong one. Stupid hammer. I mean, it was the hammer's fault. You're talking. You're not talking to the guy next to you. You're talking to the hammer. You're muttering. The Bible says to mutter the word. 
Speak the word to yourself. 1 Peter 2.24 says, by his stripes I am healed. Or I was healed. If I was healed, then I am healed. Thank you, Father. The word of God declares in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, that I am healed. And I believe that I'm healed because your word says so. You're not talking to me. You're not talking to anybody in the church. You're talking to you. You're muttering. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt mutter it day and night. Why? What does it say? There in Joshua 1, it says that thou mayest observe to do. As you mutter it, you begin to train yourself to do what the Word says. To believe what the Word says. Not just have an experience, I'm born again, I love Jesus, got some Holy Ghost goosebumps. Woo! I can go over that God. Now, we're going to be having some of that when Shekinah Glory gets here. Hallelujah. I guarantee that. Come prepared. You might want to ready your running shoes. I think we might have to open this door and that door and let you just run out and run around the building and come out through. All right? <laughs> come and find out. <laughs> yeah. We've never had that happen. Never did that. But it's always the first time for everything. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, but as you train yourself to do, then you'll make your way prosperous and you'll have good success. See, as you come into alignment with what God says, you're, you're accessing the promise of Abraham of blessing and increase by coming into agreement with what God says and bring it into your life. Because now you're muttering it, you're meditating on it, you're feeding on it, and now you will go out and do. If you say it long enough, you'll go do it. Well, but the thing is, if you're saying the wrong thing, you'll go out and do the wrong thing. I tell people, that, I tell people all this time, a man don't sit up, you know, get up in the morning, never thought about hooking up with somebody. Never in his life, ne never had the thought cross his mind. And go out, go to the restaurant, look at a woman, go, whew, hey, you want to go to the hotel? It don't happen that way. How did it happen? He meditated on it. He thought about it. He talked about it to himself. Man, I sure would like to hook up with that one. You know, oh, I'm married. I can't do it. But, you know, boy, she's hot. You know? Don't hurt the look. Yeah, but you looking and you thinking. I mean, I mean, one old preacher said one time, he said, Fel in Bible school, fellas, the second look is a sin. So take a good, long look the first time. Now, that is the dumbest counsel I've ever heard in my life. No. What happened was he meditated on hooking up with somebody. And when he got up that morning, he'd been doing it for so long that when the opportunity presented itself, he acted on what he had been feeding on. Now, if you'll do that with the word... Then when the opportunity presents itself, you'll act on it and receive what God has for you. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's, let's close. No, it is not. I need a timer. <laughs> Sorry, guys. And this is our power. This is hour and a quarter of power. We're eight, eight, we went 815. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm glad you thought so. Anybody mad with an extra 15 minutes? All right. I was going to say repent if you did. Or Joe's going to, I'll deal with it if you need from you, Pastor. Let's receive our offering. Hallelujah. If you're watching by internet, uh, we receive uh, through uh, PayPal or a cash app. Our PayPal is give at expeditiontriad.org. Our cash app <coughs> is um, dollar sign expedition, hallelujah, dot, no, that's just expedition triad. Is that right? Expedition, dollar sign expedition triad. Hallelujah. No dot or anything. The uh, PayPal uses an email address. So give at expeditiontriad.org or dollar sign expedition triad. <coughs> and you can give electronically. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't forget Sunday coming up. We're going to have a good time again. We will not be eating outside. Is God good or what? Look at the weather forecast last Sunday and went, 
oh my gosh, it's going to be 95 degrees. Some, we even set up some tables inside for people who couldn't handle the heat to be able to come in and sit in the air conditioning. And the, the clouds rolled in, and it got overcast. And even though it's still warm, it didn't have that heat beating down on you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, don't miss those because I had to take 30 hot dogs home and freeze them. About 25 hamburgers home and freeze them. A gallon and something of chili. Yeah, that's all right. I'll pull it out of the freezer, warm it up, grab some of that chili and heat that up. And uh, have hamburgers and hot dogs because they were good. Yeah. Hallelujah. All right. Father, in Jesus' name, we bless the people as they give and tithe and sow seed to the kingdom of God. Thank you that you bless them in accordance with your word. And we receive it done now in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Joe, receive the in-house offering. Um, praise God. If you're sending electronic, go ahead and send that. And amen. And then we will see you on Sunday, guys. Ladies. Hallelujah. Amen. We will probably have another work day soon, not too far in distant future. We, we got a little bit more stuff to do. We do need to move some rock around out there. We need to just kind of level out some of the rock. And um, I'm going to need to buy a sign that says no trucks because they're coming through. You see the, where the double tires are going in through the parking lot in places. And um, Going to put a camera out there with a loudspeaker. Get off the rocks. We'll give the county um, deputies permission to come do their paperwork in our driveway. We'd love for you to come sit in our driveway and, you know, in our parking lot and do your paperwork. Hallelujah. You know, and, uh, and if they pull in with a tractor trailer, you tell them to get out of here. You know, hallelujah. Amen. But we do need to do that because they're just... You can see it. They've actually run over the um, parking bumpers on the end over here a couple of times and moved them. We had to put them back because they just, you know, let's just, anyway, there, yeah, we use it. And I got to clean up. We got to pay for putting rock back out and do all that stuff when you do this mess. So we got to get a sign for that, you know. And I want to say it nicely, you know, like if you drive through a parking lot, you will burn in hell or something like that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Have a blessed day. <laughs> just needed that extra. You know, see, the taking the pastor's lead, that is just awesome. See how that works? <laughs> All right. Listen, we love you. Appreciate you. God bless you. Love to see you at Expedition Church in, here in Pleasant Garden, North Carolina, 4.3 miles from Interstate 85 at the exit 124. Um, you can look us up on the internet at expeditiontriad.org, or you can look us up on Facebook at Exped uh, Expedition Triad. Uh, we'd love to have you with us. Until we meet again uh, in person or on air, God bless you. Remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. See you next time here at Expedition Church.